Hello and welcome, my name is Dr. David Liu and in this particular video I'm going to be talking about how I personally take notes on my computer. Um, I've tried to create this system which I optimised for myself and basically I wanted to save myself from typing heaps, I wanted to save myself from spending a lot of time on writing my notes which I tended to do a lot in med school and pretty much got arthritis on my hands. <laughs> and um, something which I thought was something that's just going to be very efficient for me to do. Um, it combines a few different pieces of software, but I hope that you find this interesting because uh, certainly this is the way that I try to learn things now as well as try to memorize uh, concepts in my day-to-day -day learning as a doctor. So basically I'll turn to Notion. On the left hand side is the app called Notion and Notion is kind of like if you use Evernote or OneNote before, kind of like that except for the fact that it's got this really cool thing which is called a toggle list and so as you can see here I've literally just got this list of stuff that I'm contributing to as I learn it so it's not organized in any particular way apart from the heading and the reason that I've done that is because I found that when I try to spend time structuring my notes and trying to hide them away into different categories and different specialties and stuff while studying notes. Oops, my light is off, but whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't need the rest of this video. Um, the problem with trying to have lots of different specialties that I would tuck the headings under is that you find that one when you're just coming across stuff in real life, for example, you've got patients in front of you and you just want to, you know, save that bit of information from the patient, sometimes it's not very easy because you don't really have um, the knowledge of what you're going to learn that particular day before you actually go and learn it. Um, so that's not ideal. Obviously, if you have a, a more set curriculum, find organizing your notes completely easy, but when you're in um, something like, for example, practicing medicine, then sometimes a patient will come and you'll be like, ooh, like maybe I should learn a bit more about osteoporosis, and so you learn about it on the spot. And then um, the next trouble becomes trying to figure out a way to remember to revise that particular thing so that it just doesn't drop off your list. So you may do something like keep a journal or something like that and just at the end of the day write down, oh, I learned about this today. But um, I find that that can be a bit tricky. Sometimes it's easier just to write the information on the spot and just have it all in one gigantic list. And then, you know, once it's actually physically memorized, you can organize it later for um, easier viewing a bit later on. So I've just started studying um, ears, nose, throat uh, in this sort of module that we're forced to do. <laughs> I mean, sorry, wait, 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 well, we have the privilege to do. Um, and so my study system basically tries to revolve around this idea of active recall, which is a evidence-based method for studying more effectively. Basically what that is, is that you're trying to take things and ask them as questions and rather than give yourself the answer straight away um, you have to try to think about what the answer is first because the problem with reading stuff and just copying down heaps and heaps and heaps of notes is that it can be very passive and by the time you get to the end of whatever you started to try to read um, you may not actually remember any of it so rather than have that situation come up you should organize your thing in terms of notes so I've just so I guess I've got this thing over here to type some media right here and Talking about this particular case, um, I want to take this bit, which is the actual case file, and be like, a five-year-old is brought to see you in the GP clinic, he's been in pain and crying at night, he's got a viral urty and temperature of that, um, autoscopy is left ear shows, blah blah blah. So basically like, you know, I could be um, a noob and just like type all this stuff down by scratch, and that's actually, to be honest, what I used to do. Um, when I was a medical student because <laughs> I didn't realize that actually why don't I just screenshot it because that's actually so much quicker so instead um, you can just perform some magic like this which I've done on my screen and so when I say magic it's not really magic it's just uh, the clever use of shortcuts on a Mac it's um, shift command and four you can remap the keys uh, using a software called Keyboard Maestro or some other method. So I don't use the shift command for, I actually have remapped the keys, so I just press Ctrl and F. But I'll talk about how to do that in a different video, I think. Um, but like by doing that and just simply then press, like I'll just delete this again and just drop, show you again. So basically like if I press Ctrl F, highlight this bit and then go over here in Notion, just command V, 
And then that's how I physically get it pasted. You know, it took me two seconds to do that as opposed to typing up the whole thing. So actually, like, I don't need to rewrite this. Like, there's no benefit to me. It's too passive, so I'm not going to learn it, even if I do write it. It's just going to waste my time, waste my energy, and, you know, I have all the information right there if I screenshot it right. So it's actually better to do it that way. Um, this is already, like, this particular module is trying to get me to do actively call on pre-press or fire studio anyway. And then I have this appearance. So rather than just copy and pasting this whole thing as a whole, like, case, I'm going to actually, like, what write a question here. So for example, what is the autoscopic appearance of the fire studio? And, in, and then I'll put the actual picture, uh, which I'll copy and paste inside here like that and so now when i come back to this question let's say i'm coming to revise it um i'll look through this list and you know go through it one by one and then when i come to this otitis media part i'll be like oh this is the case what is the otopic, auto autoscopic appearance of otitis media and i'll just like try to recall what that actual picture looks like um and then if i get it right great, I can then chuck that as a yellow or green in my highlighting system. In this particular case, I know, you know, it looks like that because it's just a sort of red inflamed panic membrane with a little bit of effusion. Um, so, you know, that's actually a pretty easy question. So then I'll just highlight that as green. Um, I will click on submit and sure enough, we were right. This is mild left side of the Titus Media. Um, how would you manage this child? So that would actually be the next question that I would just put here. In this particular case, I'm not going to I'm just going to quickly type because it's, it's going to take me to the site that actually copy paste. Um, and then I would have a guess first before I even try to look at the answer because that's the whole point of active recall again. So, for example, in this particular case, would be analgesia with uh, panel and neurofin, drink, blood cell fluids, and then consider what this would in two days if not. Basically, um, so I'll see whether my answer is right or not. And in this particular case, because again, it's a module, um, I can sort of have this question answer format. But even if you didn't have that, uh, so you can see that, uh, for example, here it's saying that I should actually prescribe that for five days if they're no better than in 48 hours. So I probably should have included a little bit more stuff in there. Um, so yeah, that's basically how I do my thing. And let's say that uh, I was less comfortable with this particular answer. I might even chuck it as red to start off with. And then when I'm again going through my list of stuff, I can come back to here and be like, oh, I didn't know this answer very well. Maybe it's actually very important that I know this answer. So I'll take a look at that one. And then if I, you know, got the right answer in my mind when I try to answer it again, then I'll just change this to a green. So, with this way, I can see which sort of questions and answers are not, um, you know, up to scratch in terms of my knowledge and what I actually remember. So, like, let's take this osteoporosis one, for example. I'll be like, ah, oh, like, I already know the risk factors to adjust with osteoporosis, which is calcium, vitamin D, weight-bearing exercises. So I really don't need to go through that again because I'm pretty comfortable with that, right? But what's the max maximum duration of bisphosphonates? For some reason, I sort of was a bit more uncomfortable with that before, which is why I marked it yellow. Um, I know now that the max duration is probably about five years, uh, depending on how old they are and what the risk of minimal trauma fracture is. Um, and then sometimes you can consider to use it for longer. So I, like now I'm pretty confident about that answer. And basically it says that. So I will just expand this a little bit. And this is again, like it's a bunch of text, but I've actually just screenshot it. Cause sometimes, sometimes like <laughs> this is like a weird thing that I find, but sometimes I like to visualize what physically it looked like when I was actually trying to read it. Um, when I was actually trying to read it from the actual article and somehow just trying to conjure up, oh yeah, I read this particular article at this particular time and it said this exact thing. It's kind of like, it's just like a visual aid of sorts because when your text all kind of looks like the same, um, it can kind of like mesh into your mind as just one homogenous huge thing of text, right? But somehow like giving a different visual element makes it a little bit easier to remember. Uh, I don't know if there's been studies about it or anything like that, but I know it works for me. So I can change this to green now because I'm, I'm 
you know, pretty well understand it. So I'll change the color there. And yeah, so this is how I um, basically learn things and chuck it into this Notion app. So it's a combination again of um, <clears throat> copy and pasting uh, screenshots and then asking myself questions as opposed to trying to um, make a huge document of stuff so that it's easier. Um, organizing it all in total lists so that I don't have the answer straight away but I can expand the answer very quickly and then using this sort of highlighting system to see whether like if I know it then it's green, if I don't know it, then it's, but I've read it, then it's red. Like, what is denosumab commencement, or probably uh, commencement regime? Um, I mean, from memory, like, I know that um, denosumab is an injection. Uh, I know that it's something that you have to make sure that you've got um, enough calcium for, because it it's kind of like swallows the calcium in order to chuck it into the bones. So apart from that, <laughs> maybe there's more stuff that I can't remember. And so that's why I've just like, you know, one could certainly go ahead and type all this up into dot points and stuff, but you can see how inefficient that would be. So um, anyway, I think I've sold you. If you've gotten to this point of the video, you're probably sold on the, <laughs> the benefits of this sort of thing. Um, so the downsides, there's a few downsides to this particular thing. One is that you have to do retrospective organization. So with the retrospective organization thing, unfortunately, because you're literally just chucking it into this gigantic pile of stuff, like the benefit of it is kind of also its downside. The benefit being that you've got it on list so you won't forget it. But the downside is that you later have to organize it. You know, if you're pretty quick with a computer, you've got a good grasp of touch typing and shortcuts and stuff should be no problem, you can organize it pretty quickly and I don't think it's a real problem. In fact, it's kind of like a satisfying thing to get rid of stuff that you know, um, but some people might not like that. The other major downside perhaps is that um, if you're trying to use uh, spaced repetition, which is another way for trying to memorize things really well, then it's not very purist in that sense. Like if you're using an app like Anki, for example, or any other app that shows you something after a like a certain period of time well like this one you've kind of got your whole list and you can see your whole list every time you physically you know go back to actually do some work um and like technically with space repetition you're supposed to try to only remember the thing remember the thing once it's just about to leave your memory. Um, but um, I find that this traffic light system is really, really helpful for knowing where your weak spots and where do you need to revise. And it's kind of just like trying to make your efficiency better. Uh, Cause we spend a lot of effort on learning, but sometimes we don't grab the need, we don't feel the need to spend a lot of time revising when actually rather than trying to do one sudden cram search at the end of your year, like the week before exams where you just like go through everything and you know try to cram as much as you can, probably you should just keep on revising through the year and you know a, a theoretically disciplined human being would do that. I know it's not always easy but I think that in the end, that will probably save you a lot more time than you think. And not only that, but you know, especially for something like medicine, where you're not just memorizing it for the exams, hopefully, you're trying to memorize it like for life so that you can actually physically use the things that you learn. Um, then this idea of instilling it into long-term memory is very useful. So um, there is one last very, very cool thing that I want to show you about this, actually. Um, and it actually uses two different apps. <laughs> so the first one is um, on my iPad. So uh, it's called Notability and I'll just uh, let's start a quick video here. So let's say that you're trying to um, like include a drawing or something. So I don't know if I would be including like uh, the picture of the ear and just like very quickly draw something and be like, oh, that's like a cone of light. And so like, you know, if you've got this sort of diagram and you've drawn it and you're just like, oh, it's a malleolus and, you know, this thing is a kind of light that's supposed to be there and basically this bit is just all tympanic membrane, right? So, <laughs> super patch, <laughs> so forgive me, but... Um, 
Like, let's say that you wanted to very quickly add that to your notes. So sometimes if you've just got your note-taking software on an iPad and you're purely doing an iPad, you know, that's totally fine. Your, your workflow is going to be optimized. But if you're trying to use like a computer and you want to draw something and put it in your computer quickly, um, this is the way that I physically do it. So I've just titled this a Times Media Drawing, as you can see up to the top of here. And then I'll just share it to um, my Dropbox and then I'll send it like that. And then that's already sent now, so that's really quick. And um, with that, since instantly in cloud, right? So there's another app called Alfred, which I'll show you on the computer. And so what Alfred does is you actually just press option space and then it automatically brings up this search bar immediately, as you can see. And then you can just open any file really quickly. So I'm going to type space and then a type this media drawing. That's why I just named it. And you can see it's already come up there. And you can see that this is a picture that I've just drawn. With my copy and paste technique, I will literally just copy and paste that. And then I can put it to wherever I like. Where's my old Titus Media thing gone? Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, this is a different one. <laughs> sorry, I found it in the end. It took me a little while to find, but anyway, it's here. So I can just very quickly copy and paste it into there. So using that screenshot tool, Using combination of screenshot, notability, cloud software, Notion, like you can see how all these things make it very, very quick to take notes in a very idealistic way. Um, if you don't have Dropbox, you can use Google Drive or whatever cloud software you want. But yeah, that's um, that's my note taking system. So um, this is what I'm currently using. I have to study for my specialist exams as a doctor, uh, as a general practitioner, um, and. You know, I feel like for me this is like as optimized as it gets. I tried stuff like Anki before, but I've just found that with Anki you just get burdened by the cards because unfortunately the amount of space repetition that they try to make you do on Anki is um, like, especially if you're someone like me that likes to add a lot of detail and try to memorize every detail, sometimes you lose the forest for the trees and you just get shown cards again and again that you know like you should, I guess, memorize. but but um, the burden just becomes too much, especially if you're like really busy. So having this, the other, I guess the other main thing about this is that if you really don't want to subject, like let's say that I didn't want to learn about antidepressants today, although that's a really important topic, but let's say I thought it wasn't. So then I just cross it off and I just, you know, don't bother with it. If I have just find, you know, actually that's not that important. Um, even though I've typed it down, just get rid of it. So you don't have to memorize everything and trying to memorize everything is kind of <laughs> it's kind of the errand that we're running but to some degree it is a fool's errand so just be careful with that i hope this video was useful um and sorry about the light yeah whatever the first first half of the production quality can be fine, the second half can be bad. So <laughs> if you got to the point cool thank you so if you like this video um just don't press the dislike button, please. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video.